Okay. Hi, all. Can you hear me? Can everyone hear me? Okay. Thanks for your coming. I hope everyone is fine and take care and take care of yourselves in such situation. And in the tutorial session today, we are going to review the contents covered in topic five, which includes some important concepts in linear algebra, such as non space and column space. They are also very useful in your future study and, uh, and research. I will go through the concepts firstly, and in the last part, you can ask questions in topic five. Okay, firstly, let's start with subspace. And part one subspace, the definition of uh, of a subspace is quite clear. A subset S of a vector space V is called a subspace of V. If S is a vector space under vector addition and uh, scalar multipl multiplication as defined in V. It means that if you get some vectors from the vector space V, then you need to do all the possible vector addi addition and scalar multiplication. It will form a subspace, but usually we don't do such operation. We really just want to check a given subset in V is a subspace or not. So we have the zero. A subset S of vector space V is a subspace of V if it is satisfies satisfies three conditions. The first, the first one is a subspace must contain the zero vector. This is the most important one. You need to check, and then S must be closed under vector addition and also scalar multiplication. So the theorem give us a clear procedure to check a subset with a subspace or not. You just need to check condition A and then condition B and finally condition C. You can just follow this method in your in the homework five, which 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 has been pu published. Okay, so let's see some two examples here. The first, the first one is S is X and X plus one and X belongs to R. And we want to check S is a space, is a subspace of R2 or not. Check con, then we need to firstly check condition A, the zero is belong is in S or not. We can see there is no such uh, X uh, satisfying equations, both X to equals to zero and uh, X plus one equals to zero. This equation, these two equations are, are uns unsolvable. So it's, it's not a space of R2. And there is, and if condition A is not is not satisfied, you don't have to check, you don't need to check condition B and C, even though maybe condition B and condition C are satisfied by some subset, but which is not a subspace. Okay, let's see. Example two. S is a sub here. S is a is a subset of R three. We need to check whether it is a subspace. In the same way, 
we need to check condition I firstly. We just need to solve the equation on the left x to x equals to zero, y equals to zero, and x plus y equals to zero. Clearly, x the zero, uh, the, the the zero vector x equals to zero, y equals to zero can satisfy this the condition A. So the zero vector is contained in S. Then we need to we need to check condition B. To check condition B is satisfied or not, we just need to choose two arbitrary vectors from S. Here we need to pay attention to that the vectors come from S, V1 and V2. In condition B, we want to check the the subset S is closed or not under vector addition. So we just need to sum v1 and v2 and to see the result whether it has the form of the vectors in S. So we can see v equals to v1 plus v2. And the final result is x x1 plus x2 and y1 plus y2 x1 so the re you can see the result is clearly has the has the form for a vector in s so the so condition b is satisfied as it is closed under vector addition Since, B, B, since condition B is satisfied, we also we just at last we need to check condition C. Choose one arbitrary vector from S and on scalar, which is a real real number, and see the result V prime has an. We can see the the result V prime has a form for victory in S. So all the three conditions are all satisfied. We can conclude that S is the subspace of R3. So this procedure is quite clear. You just need to follow this procedure in your homework five. And in homework five, there is a lot of exercise you can take to get familiar with this concept. Does anyone have some questions in part one? Okay, if no, we'll continue to Part two. In part two, we are going to review two important subspace in linear algebra, which is related to some matrix. It's quite very, it's quite important. Since we have known what is the subspace. So we are going to go a further step to see the column space. And here we need to pay attention to that column space and null space are all related to some matrix. So when you talk, when we are discussing talking about column space and null space, we must have a matrix firstly. Okay, so let's, let's see the definition of a column space. The column space of an n by n matrix called A is a set of all the linear combinations of the all the columns of A. So in mathematic interpretation, you can take 
take the matrix A m by n dimensions as A1, A2, to A n. And each each column is each column it belongs to R m. So it's a m by one vector. So the column space of A is the span of from A1 to A2 to A n. Here, lambda i belongs to is are some are any real numbers. So this is here. You can we can see it is the all the linear combinations as lambda i are all arbitrary. So please note. If a vector B belongs to column space of A, and then there must exist some X which, which belongs to Rn such that AX equals to B and uh, X equals to lambda one and uh, to lambda two and lambda n. So if we want to check whether a vector is included in column space of A or not, we just need to check whether AX equals to B is solvable or not. So it is just to solve linear equations. Then we get the theorem, the column space of matrix A is the subspace of Rm. Pay attention that the dimension of column space is equals to the rows, the row of, of the matrix A, which is M. In the theorem, which is saying the column space is the subspace of Rm. So we, we can, so we're going to prove this theorem. Following the same procedure we have, which have been, which has been mentioned here, three conditions. So firstly, check condition A. The zero vector is belong to belong to column space A, which means A he according to what I have mentioned here. A x equals to b here b equals to zero. A x equals to zero is clearly solvable just choosing x equals to zero. So which means zero is if the vector is contained in column space of a. And then we are also going to check condition b to arbitrary vector from column space b1 and b2. Then we know that there must exist two vectors from Rn x1 and Rx2, such that Ax1 equals to B1, Ax2 equals to B2. And uh, you sum them up here, you just need to take alpha1 and alpha2 equals to 1 here. So we can we know that b equals to a x a x a times x one plus x two. This is in this part has the form has the form of column space of a has the form of a vector from column space of a. So we can see the column space is closed under vector addition. And then to check condition C, if B belongs to column space of A and we have A x equals to B, and for any beta, which is a real number, you can see B prime also has the form of the vector in column space of A. Because A times beta x is also a linear combination of the, all the columns in A. So column space is closed under scalar multiplication. So we can conclude 
column space of A is the subspace, and the dimension is R I the row of the matrix. But we but usually the column space or is also called range space, but they are the same, just different names. The next one is non-space. Here non means nothing, right? So we can see from the definition. The non-space of on matrix M by N is a set of all the solutions to the homogeneous equation AX to equal zero. Here zero means nothing, just point. So when there are n columns in A and the solution AX equals to zero, it belongs to Rn and the non space is a subspace of Rn. Play, pay attention to that to test if a given vector u is on is under non space A. We just need to calculate a u matrix A times U to see if A U is just a zero vector. Here I post a figure here. The blue part, the blue and uh, the blue set in the left is the, the whole the whole space R N. And uh, if you times a matrix A on the left to all the vectors in Rn. You map the all the vectors to the right part in the red circle. The red certain uh, all the um, the red circle is called the column space of A. You can see it's all the linear all the linear combination of the vectors in Rn and you get the column space A which is a circle, especially if the vectors is in the non-space of A and then under the under matrix A, all the vectors are mapped into the ori ori the zero vector in Ra. So is the so the figure can clearly explain explain the geometric the geometric meaning of the uh, space and column space. And here, the dimension of non-space of A is equals to N because all the vectors in non-space is in, in come from Rn. So the dimension of non-space is N. And uh, all the column, all the vectors in column space of A come from Rn. So the column space, the column space, the dimension of column space of A is equals to A. They are different because the vectors in this in these two subspace are in different are in the uh, in different how to say, in different vector space, which is Rn and which is Rn. So as I mentioned, the non-space of A is also a subspace of Rn. So we are going to prove it, prove this one. Following the procedure, which we have followed to check whether an arbitrary set is, subset is a subspace, subspace. Firstly, check condition A. We can say A matrix A times zero equals to zero. So X equals to zero belongs to non space because A map zero, zero vector vector in Rn to the zero vector in Rn, which is clear. And then we need to, to check condition B. If x1 and x2 equals to non-space of A, 
So AX1 equals to zero and BX1, BX, AX2 also equals to zero. And then sum them up, we have here alpha one and alpha two are also equal to zero. Oh, oh sorry, it should be equal to one. As AX, so it, it turns out to be alpha one times AX one plus alpha two AX two. As AX one here and AX two are all equals to zero. So X prime, AX prime equals to zero. So which means X prime also is included in our space of A. So now space of A is closed under vector addition. Then we need to con check condition C, take an arbitrary vector X from the null space. As X is in the null space, so X equals to zero. And for any real number beta, A times beta X equals beta AX. So a x prime equals to zero. So which means x prime is also in the null space, which means the null space of a is closed under scalar multiplication. So the null space is of the matrix is also a subspace. In the last part, we are going to review the linear transformation. Usually we can view linear transformation as some operations on vector. We just, just need to multiply the a matrix on the left. So we can get R prime equals to TR. Here T is the general, general transformation matrix. We can go through some details, such as some examples here. The first one is the k dilation of R2, which maps x, x, y to k, x, and k, y. So the matrix, the matrix form of this trans linear transformation is this one here. R prime equals to R equals to t times R. Here t is a two by two matrix. It's a that diagonal matrix which the eigen which the eigenvalues are or k it's just the a k dilation is just to stretch the vector by a k scalar however if you want to stretch the 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 different the axis is to different times you just need to use kl and uh, k and l are the eigenvalues of the of the transformation matrix t which is in this form the third one is the rotation in r2 which maps x, y to x cosine theta minus y sine theta and x sine theta, x sine theta plus y cosine theta. It's a matrix form. Maybe it's more straightforward. Here t equals to cosine theta minus sine theta, sine theta and cosine theta. You can see the determinant of t is it calls equal to one. So in rotate if you so when you are going to rotate a vector, it will not change the it will not change the norm or the length of the vector. It's um, as the determinant of t equals to one. So the norm of the norm of apply equals to r but, uh, which is squared x form x x um, x times x plus y times y and this is the rotation in the 
in the plane in a plane but if you want to but if you want to ch see how when you want to rotate the vehicle in the in a three dimension in the three dimension and maybe just in the real in the real world in the real world which is maps x y z to x prime y prime z prime so when you want to rotate the vector you have to assign uh, an, a direction maybe the direction of the rotation operation usually you would just choose x axis x axis and y axis oh sorry here should be z axis firstly a rotation about the x axis by r file which is which turns out to be this one the rotation matrix is a three by three a matrix which is in this form as we rotate the vector about the x axis so clearly the number and the length in x axis will not change so here in th this value is equals to one you can also write this this part out you can see x prime equals to x and uh, this part this part okay i think here this part is the same as the rotation in r2 because in the rotation operation of in r2 which implies you rotate the vector in the xy plane about the z axis Then we can we continue to say rotation about y axis, which is you know, as you rotate the vector about y axis. So the second the second element in the diagonal is equals to one. Yeah, in the when you want to rotate the vector about the z axis the third element is equals to one. And the rotation matrix is quite useful in, how to say, in robotics, which is quite, which is often used to do in the forward kinematics in rob when you want to add it in the robotics. And the last one is the refraction of in of R2, which maps XY to this one. I'm not actually I'm not familiar with this one as it's not very it's not very often used. I don't know it will whether it will be used in some other majors, but in robotics we seldom use this one. Okay. So all the examples we have mentioned are just some examples in in linear transformation, but the general transformation, linear transformation is defined here. A linear transformation T originated from a vector space V, which is called the domain into the vector space W called the image or range is an assignment from for each vector x in v a unique vector tx in w it 
which is which need to satisfy two conditions, which t the trans the linear transformation of the sum of vector equals to the sum of uh, the sum of the linear transformation of every of the two vector. And the second one is the linear transformation of a scalar multiplication of the vector in the domain equals to the scalar multiplication of the linear transformation of the corresponding vector. So when you, so we can see that the linear transformation just maps the origin, which is the zero, the zero vector in V to W. So both V and W contains zero, contains zero vector. So if you want to, uh, so if you want to get familiar with this general form, you can follow, you can see the example five in the lecture note. The firstly is also to consider the zero one. This is the first step you need to check if this, this the first condition cannot be satisfied. You need to do the following calculations, which seems to very a little bit complicated. And uh, so, and then check the condition one t u plus v and t u plus t v. You have to here you can this one the step step two is calculate the left the left side and then step three is come calculate the, the right side. So you can see here. This part and this part are different. So, in the in, in the transformation exam in example five, which is nonlinear. because you can see in the transformation, it maps x, y to x plus y square here. Usually, when, if an operation involves some square, it's usually not a linear transformation. So in the, if, uh, and also, if you want to move a vector from another from a uh, from a point to another point, it's also a not a linear transformation because zero uh, zero vector is not included in the image or in the range here is a w. Okay, so that's all the contents in our tutorial. So does anyone have some questions? Does anyone have some questions about the concepts in topic five? Okay. So if no, I'm going to end the meeting. So, okay, so thank you.